Hi there. It's Noxter here. I'm on a copy of the Alichno Season 6 world to remind you to name your places. It's proven that giving names to basic terrain features just helps to make even the smallest details that are normally quite boring just brings them to life and makes them interesting. So, I've created a little data pack called Toponymy, which encourages you to do that in a nice, fun and friendly, competitive way. So, let me explain. The basic principle is to create little points and or markers, like that one over there, or this one here, or various ones, and they come in three tiers. The most common ones being tier one and two. So a good example here is, that's a tier two point over there, which marks Pterodont Ridge, which is this entire mountain range of Terracotta Hills. Whereas this is a tier one point there, which marks the Pterodont Gate, which is just this little gap in that same ridge. Again, there's a tier two point here is the Sands of Guile. Get a bit closer so you can see refers to this entire desert area. The river over there is the River Natala, and that's a tier two point as well. But something like the village of Acacia, I've called that a tier one point. So basically, generally a tier one point is anything that you can stick a point at and say, this there is that thing. A tier two point is something where you can say, this there is marking kind of the middle point of that thing and you can tell the area around it. A valley, a mountain might be a tier two point, whereas a specific nook in the valley or a bend in a river or a peak on that mountain might be a tier one point. There's also tier three points, which mark entire regions or realms, which might encompass multiple areas. So this entire area all around my mountain of the Drakenberg here is called Drakenshear. And I've marked it with a point, and you can put multiple points for the same location, as we see here. That one's for the River Natala. So is that one. I've dotted a few along it. A bit of trial and, and error will help us to understand exactly how far away to space these. But that's the basic system. There's tier one, two, and three points that you can create. Now, as you've seen, if I mouse over them, it tells me a little bit about them. It'll tell me their name. But if I happen to be holding a compass or a spyglass or a map or some other navigation tool, it'll tell me a bit more. In this case, it says the river Natala was found by Noxter. But if I look there, um, I've also marked Drakenshear again, which was found by me, which is the tier three point. But over there, it'll tell me that this is the Pterodont Gate, which is in Pterodont Ridge, which is part of Drakenshear, which was found by Noxter. So you get a little bit more info. And there's a way you can get even further info, which I will explain now. Most of the functions of this data pack are accessed via means of commands. So there's one special command you type, you do a slash, trigger, and you can use tab to complete, and NST toponymy. And that will open up this little options menu in your chat, and then you can click things. There's also a special item used for creating points, which we'll get to. So the most basic thing, first of all, is, is the info. So all you have to do is look at a point so that it's showing up on your screen. Open chat, click on the info button, and it'll tell me that this is Pterodont Ridge of Drakenshear found by Noxter. It'll also tell me this info about what the meaning of the name is, and it tells me that it's Latin for Earth Tooth and it also gives me coordinates of the point if for some reason I want that. So it'll tell you extra info. You can explain it, particularly if it happens to be a reference to something. I can see, for example, uh, the River Natala. We'll get the name of that and click info and it'll tell me that it's derived from the Latin word for birth and this river leads all the way back to world, to world spawn. So it's kind of synonymous between spawning and birth. And that's why it's named that, but also for particularly if it was a reference to something, like if it was I named something after something that's from obscure Middle Earth lore, um, I might be able to explain that in a point so that anyone who's interested can name, can, can understand that. Now, the other basic commands are this hiding information. You might find all these glowing points get annoying after a while. 
I don't know. I've not played with them enough to know if they do. They're fairly un unobtrusive. But if they get annoying, you can switch them off. So I can choose to hide just all the tier 1 points. And like that, the tier 1 points are gone. But I can still see the 2s and 3s because there's probably going to be less of those. I can choose to hide the tier 2 as well as the tier 1s. So I can choose to hide everything. And then nothing will show up at all. Or then I can choose to click show all and have everything visible again. Um, bearing in mind this is a per player setting but their visibility is global so if I'm standing next to Joe Bloggs and I've got my points hidden but Joe Bloggs doesn't then I'll still be able to see them. Um, any player you have to be within 160 blocks and they'll show up. Alright let's just open that again so we get rid of all the details. The other functions are move and clone which are for moving and cloning points quite simply. So if I have a point that's there, that kind of refers to this whole pterodon gate structure and maybe I think it would be best if it was actually down at the ground level. I basically just go to where I want to move the point to, look at the point, and spyglass really helps if it's far away to make sure you're right on it, and I click move and suddenly that point is moved to me. boats, things like scaffolding are probably important for making sure you can get them in the right spot. Now maybe I think we want another point for the River Natala. I might decide, well, what if people are coming over that direction and don't know it's the River Natala? So you also have the ability to clone points, like we've done several times. There's another point there, but maybe I feel like we want another one. So to do that, you use the clone function. So once again you sight on a point you've already caught until it's highlighted and click the clone button and it will make a copy. And then I can go back again a bit further away and then move it to where I want it. And to get it a proper distance away you might find you have to move it several times. But that's alright, that's how it works. So those are the basic functions that you don't need any special items for. Probably wondering, that's fine, but how do we create these points? Well, you get yourself a book and a quill, stick it in a crafting grid with a compass, and you'll get a feather. Why a feather? The reason for this is because in data packs, you can make custom crafting recipes, but you can't make them craft custom items. They can only do plain items without any NBT data. So to work around that, you make them craft something that's normally, there's no way to craft a feather, but I can detect when you've crafted a feather and also get you one of these, which is a toponymicon, or toponymicon, or however you're supposed to pronounce that. I don't know. I made up the word and I don't know. Um, which again is actually a writable book, like the one you put in there. So you can kind of think of you're combining the book with the compass and you're just pulling the feather out of the written book. But you could also abuse it to turn compasses into feathers because you can then craft this with another compass and get more feathers. So if you have infinite compasses but are short on feathers, you could exploit the system. Hmm. So say we want to create a point. This entire valley with its lovely birch trees happens to be called Betula Vale. I named it myself years ago. But now how do we make it official? Uh, we would call this a tier 2 point because we're naming this entire valley. So we skip page 1, leave it completely blank. On page 2 we write the name, Betula Vale. If I want to add a tier 3 information, I could say that it is part of Drakenshire. That's optional, I don't have to. And I could also explain where it gets its name. I could say that it's Latin for birch. And then once I've done that, all I've got to do is open up my menu again, and now you'll see I've also got this create point button right at the top. So if I stand in a nice central location, create point, bam! This will tell me that this is now Betula Vale in Drakenshire, found by Noxter. Or it'll just tell me Betula Vale if I'm not holding an item. In Betula Vale, there is this nice boulder which I think we should give it a name. This would probably be a tier one point because it's just this single small object. So we can give it a name and because it's tier one, we write it on page one. We 
call it nice boulder. Here we go. Create a point, and there we go. This is now nice boulder. But you'll notice I didn't give it any other info. I didn't say that it was part of of Petula Vale or give any explanation behind the name. Maybe I should do that. That's where we get onto editing points. Hold your toponymic on in your hand, main hand, aim at the point you want to edit and click edit. That sucks up all the data from that. And now you'll see this book, well it's now turned green and I can now use it to edit points. So this is nice boulder, it's in Petula Vale. And that is in Draken. Yeah, I've forgotten how to spell. And I can even say why it's called a nice boulder, and it's a reference to Shrek, in which Donkey says that is a nice boulder. Done. And then, whilst holding the top of the Mekon, you click the Apply Edit button, which will have popped up automatically. And bam, that now says da di da di da da di da di da I can click on the info and see, oh no, I made a typo. I accidentally cap capitalised the O. Guess what? Edit. I can fix typos. In exactly the same way. Now, I also have the option, if I'm editing something and decided, actually, no, I don't want to edit that something, I can just let it go by clicking the cancel button. And that'll revert this without changing anything. Also important to note, you cannot change the tier of a piece of information when you edit it. So, for example, this is a tier 2 point, so if I put anything on page 1, quite literally, and then apply the edit, nothing will have changed because it ignores that page. I should probably mention the scoring system. So you get different points in the score for creating toponymy points. So it's currently set up so that if you create a tier 1 point, you get 10 points. If you create a tier 2 point, you get 50 points. And a tier 3 point gives you a whopping 500 points because it's a lot, but you should only be able to be creating a few of those. And that all adds up to get yourself a nice score, which you can compare with others in chat and go, wow, you're good at naming places. Basic etiquette applies, don't just go naming every single tree and every single thing and leave other people a chance to do it, but it creates a bit of fun and competition. But Noxter, I hear you ask, I'm terribly unimaginative, I can't think up good names for things, how can I participate in this game too? The answer is simple. You can might not be able to think up a name, but you can still see a place that could do with a good name. This mountain should have a good name. I found it. What should I call it? I don't know. But it would be a tier 2 point for a mountain of this size. So let's go to page 2 and just put a single question mark. Just a single question mark, nothing else. And then in the description I can, if I want, on page 4, add someone plus think of a good name for this whole mountain. Probably worth specifying that we are talking about the whole mountain and not just like this end jutty out thing of it. So maybe that info is good. But there we go. So I'm creating a tier two point with the name of question mark. And when I do that, I only got five points because I didn't actually come up with a name. That question mark tells it this is still untitled. It's a question mark. It was found by me, but I only got half the points. And if I click on info, I can still see someone please think of a good name for this whole mountain. And then when someone else comes along, they might have be able to look at that point, see that, wow, this does need a good name, and come along and they can think up a name for it. They, when they edit the point, you can change it to... We should call this Mount Bor 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 I've forgotten how to spell. And I can specify it's actually within Drakenshire too, like everything else. And it's called Mount Borea because it's And 
then when they apply that edit, that person then gets the other half of the points. Then when you look at it, it'll tell me that it's Mount Boria in Drakenshire. It was found by Noxstar, but named by Noxcam. So you can collaborate in that way. Obviously a bit of friendliness and stuff is important because technically there's absolutely nothing that stops me from then editing this point and calling it something else, even after someone has done that. And it'll still tell me it was found by me and named by Noxcam, even if I change the name to something completely different. So there's no, there's no safeguards for that other than just be decent about it. You know, feel free to fix up a typo or whatever or add additional info, but don't go around completely changing anything. With that, that covers all the basic features of this little data pack. Um, remembering if you get confused about the different pages that you can hover over there and it reminds you that page one is for a specific landmark, two is a landform or area, and page three is for a region or realm, and four is explanatory info. Mostly focus on explanatory info for what the names derive from. If you want to add any kind of law or anything about the place, maybe just use more conventional methods like signs and books. Um, remember, this is not supposed to be a replacement. Obviously, you can still just use signs to name things. This is just a way to keep track of official points and official names and give you a score for doing it. Obviously, basic etiquette occurs. If you see a cool river, for example, and think maybe I should name that, just go explore up and down it for a while to make sure no one already has and things like that. Um, yes, remember, leave the page completely blank if it's not creating a tier one point. Don't put any text on there at all because even if you put a space in there, it'll think the name is a space and it's a tier one point when you create a different tier. So you just use it correctly. <laughs> remember, a question mark if you don't know the name and someone else can name it later or alternatively, you could explain in the notes that I want to think of a name for this, I'll just do it later. So you can kind of claim the point and tell people not to come up with a new name for it. And then you'll get the other half of the points. Um, yeah, just basic etiquette, like, again, don't try and name everything, give other people a chance. But also remember, naming something does not mean you've claimed that location for building with. You can be perfectly happy to name somewhere and then be happy for someone else to live there or vice versa. Someone might be living somewhere, but you can name it if they want you to. Um, naming it is not claiming it, basically. Um, and so if you want to claim something, obviously do more traditional methods like living signs or other markers that say, I want to build here. But otherwise you can name something and feel free for someone else to build there. I think that about covers everything. We've covered all the different commands. The only thing I didn't show is how to delete points. Um, that's because currently that's something only an admin can do or someone in creative mode. So basically it just shows up an extra option to delete a point. Um, but I've just, to prevent abuse, even though there's plenty of other ways you can easily abuse the system. Um, yeah, that can only be done by people in creative. Um, you, so you can't just make a point and then delete it, then make a point and then delete it, then make a point and then delete it. You can still spam the world with points. And, there's, again, you can abuse the system. There's probably various ways you can you can just name everything. Um, but yeah, don't go overboard. Keep it fun for everyone involved. It's a friendly competition. The other thing I forgot to mention is when you edit a point, it will also change those data data for any clones of that point that you've made, if those clones are loaded. So, for example, uh, where I did the ribbon atala and there's multiple points which are all clones of the same point. So when you copy a point, you don't get more points for that point because it's the same point. It's just a different marker. So if an area is large enough, you'll probably need to put a few points around it just to make sure it's clear where that point is actually referring to. But bear in mind that if you do need to edit a point that is cloned, the edits will only receive that update if you if they're loaded so if you've got points at one end of the river and another point at the other end of the river and that area is not loaded and i change something um then that area might not get it and then you can have weird effects where yeah so when you copy the data into the book for editing purposes you copy from that specific point and so you could there's, there's ways you could abuse or accidentally break the system there so basically don't copy a point Try not to copy a point, or at least not far enough away, if you're 
still intending to change it later. And just be careful when changing points that are copied. But other than that, go bananas, have fun naming your places. Obviously we'll be in a completely new world. This one we said goodbye to a long time ago, but um, there'll be new places to name and I don't really know what any of them are. I haven't explored yet in the new world, in the new seed. Uh, I think we've got one suggestion about what the seed is. I think, well no, we've got the world already generated. We just haven't, haven't created it yet. So have fun exploring and naming yo places.